I knew Reese's work before, um, obviously from Flight of the Concords, and uh, he's bit, got a bit of a cult following, and well, I think probably wherever, everywhere in the world, but um, especially in London, a few very excited friends who knew at the prospect of um, knew that I was going to be potentially working with him. So um, yeah, he's and obviously from Yes Man and films like that and the boat that rocked and yeah he, he's just but I you know knew his work as a comedian rather than uh less than a obviously he's acting in those films but um knew that that's how he sort of came into the this world or into the film industry through comedy and I've come up to it from a diff different route so that's always interesting when you have two people who come from very different genres and different um, starting points to cross over always creates interesting chemistry and dynamics hopefully potentially um, I don't know yet I don't know if uh, hopefully uh, I, if that's come across well I think the initial impressions Holly has of character of Doug, played by Reese, um, is someone, she's not that impressed, really, <laughs> um, has to be said. I mean, she's um, somebody who's a, just a bit annoying, I, I think. Um, she's focused on her work as somebody coming in, um, creating a bit of mayhem and a bit of chaos, which is something that Holly really doesn't need in her life. And... Um, but actually she probably does, but it's not quite aware of it, especially at the beginning. So, yeah, initially she's just irritated. And um, and that, that creates a lovely, hopefully, dynamic between them because um, somebody who's dealing with work and her life and you've got this whirlwind energy coming in left a field, disrupting her life. And that's exactly what she needs, but she does not quite aware of it at the beginning and is trying to bat it away. But um, I think it takes somebody like Emily and somebody, well, Brenda, and, and the more he comes at her, the more she realises that actually he's not an idiot and he's, he's, he's actually, his heart is in completely the right place and he's full of, he's full of the fun of life. And that's exactly what she needs. And he um, he opens her up to, well, to love, really. And remembering that, well, I mean, there's nothing more important in life than love. And um, remembering that, actually, if you're not loving life yourself, there's no, you, you, you can't instill it in the most important person in her life, which is Taylor. So I, I think, um, yeah, I think she's obviously interested in this guy, but at the, initially, at the beginning, it's um, he's just an irritant. I think um, what um, interests Holly and what um, what is. Um, Obviously, this this guy is a bit more than an irritant because he's he's obviously concerned about. Well, I should say I'm not. Gonna, it's not duck. It's shell duck, as, as Holly keenly points out. But um, because of his relationship with Pierre, um, he's obviously somebody with um, more to him than meets the eye, and um, especially on um, than she's. For, she's made aware of um, but yeah I, I, I think that um, just sort of warms him to her um, you know it's it takes a certain kind of man to um, to take on a duck um, a shell duck and um, I, I think that that that's obviously very interesting to Holly um, because her her focus is our animals and um, 
and uh, and Taylor. And then his relationship with Taylor, and he's uh, he's obviously somebody who's quite sensitive, um, who has a very good, huge heart, and um, and wants to do the right thing, and that 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 can't be said for a lot of people, and, and probably in Holly's experience, a lot of men. Um, and um, she's obviously been hurt in the past, um, and, uh, and and is protective of her world. So for for someone like Doug, for so, to let someone in, he has to be quite special. And I think she becomes more and more aware that Doug could potentially be that someone quite special. And um, and he's so different to Holly. He's on the other end of the scale, but obviously that aid old cliche as opposites to attract and I, I think they really do complement each other and they bring hopefully what you'd want for um, a love a love interest to bring out the best in you and I think Doug brings out the best in Holly and um, hopefully she brings out the best in him. To be working with animals it's like yeah sort of it is um, that mantra that's always sort of said, never work with animals or children, but I, I don't think there's anything... It doesn't really get much better than working with animals or children, I think. So uh, to, it's a real honour, a real honour, to be working with a moor pork on your day, on day number one, is such a gift. And it's an experience I'll never forget. And um, such a beautiful native bird and rarely trained and rarely really rare. I mean, that the, you know, Reese was saying that it's unheard of, really. But um, so it's, it's the first more pork he's had such an up close experience with, and so to have one on my hand was um, was was remarkable and um, something I'll, I'll I will take away the rest of my life. So yeah, that was being plunged in the deep end, but that was great. And this is the hero bird that you're going to be oh working with. Oh my gosh! And that's uh, Ruru, the moorpork. Is that a moorpork? Yeah. So. Oh, isn't he lovely? Isn't he beautiful? Yeah. So when we we'll get we'll come back to that when we do the, the rehearsals, and um, oh, I'll teach you how to handle him and what to do. And how old is he? Eight months. Just a baby. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So Stunning. do you want to come over and have a look at your? Co-star over here in, in work. Who we got here? Kim? This is Wags. This is Wags? Wags. Yeah. But ducks, but as, as I say, ducks aren't probably, you know, uh, quite as quick as um, a dog to train, for example. So, uh, but you can see it speaking, this is the little speaking command. So when we want it to vocalise, we then, um, we then do, put uh, voice, you know, voice over on that. Hey, uh, We've had a few uh, few sessions together. Still having trouble eating. <laughs> Are you still dropping them on the floor? Good. He just knows. Good boy. Good boy. That was from last time. Yeah, we're <laughs> getting to know each other. We're much, we're much better friends now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Good. It is, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, yeah. And what it's doing now is it's just assessing distance when it does that because they've got very good. It does. Oh, yeah. okay. That's right. That's right. Just close those doors, please. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Stunning. Just make sure the doors are closed. Everything's closed. Yeah. So. Lovely. Just grab a stool there. You like that little perch, don't you? That's nice, isn't it? Hey, that's nice. Oh, These are cool. Girls, eh? So if you just pop your hand under there. 
push up and push up under the chest. That's it. So, so when you as you as you gain confidence with it, you normally you know you'll allow oh, them to sit on a perch on your hand. So you just turn that over a little bit. That's it. Oh, so it's God. just under your perch. So, and normally you tuck your when you're just handling the bird a bit more confidently, you'll just tuck it in about there. Tuck it into that bit. Yeah, just about there. So yeah. So you know, so you're relaxed, and the more relaxed you are with the bird, the more relaxed the bird is. And oh. uh, the old story. So what it's doing there is it's just judging all the distance for the perch up there, and it may fly up to the perch. And oh, Holly, oh. this is my duck. Oh, this is <laughs> my mohawk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this Hi. is uh, Pierre. Okay. Yeah. This is oh, landed on my yeah. <laughs> landed on my roof, really. Did he? This one's been bred from yeah. birth. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost fake, please. <laughs> I can assure you it's not. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My suspicions on that one. <laughs> There's a wire coming out the back there. It's yeah. not Puppeting from here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Look at the way he's looking at Pierre. Oh, it's so similar. Arnie. Yeah. Arnie. Hello. He's an actor. He's a doctor. Oh, yeah. Actor. Actor. Doctor. Duck actor. <laughs> Duck. A duck. I'm going to teach my zookeeper now how to hold Ooh. a couple of bits of meat. Oh, dear. Oh. Ooh, looks tasty. So, all you need to do is just pop that up beside her beak and see if she'll eat that. Mm -hmm. She's probably a bit distracted right at the moment. Oh, but go on then. Oh. This is not the nice part of it. But no. Oh, okay that's good. That? Yeah, that's good. Oh, my gosh. She it's name? got a small name, Ruru. Ruru. Yeah. Which is their Maori oh, name. Oh, that's dancing. Hey. And here's the Ruru. Actually, that's <laughs> got a job for a dancing bird too. Maybe we will use you. Hey. You're <laughs> lovely. <laughs> so beautiful. See if she's much more than you. So there's, there's other little <laughs> things. I mean, if we, if we really get silly in, on the day, we might do something like this. If, again, it depends a little bit on how they pop her on their shoulder, how the art director, wow. what they want. Let's just see if she does that. Right. Whoa! Oh, she's on the camera. <laughs>
your friends. Are you right? Okay. You're lying. Why is there a man, moon man at the zoo? No, Mum, look! Pause there. Do we need to? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Emily, does Emily need to come around? To no, Sally will step forward. Okay, okay. Um, cool. But Reese, that was you came around a bit early, I think. Oh, you. Um, he could do a, a bit of playback for the guys if he wants. Had a quiet, had a quiet meal. That's what we've rehearsed. That's what we've rehearsed. Do you want to come to the